Hey guys, and welcome. Today on ATPL Theory, we're going to be talking about why aircraft have swept back wings. So the need for a swept back wing came years ago when aircraft started becoming faster and started encountering problems, which initially nobody understood why. I'm going to give you a brief explanation on what the problem was. I'll cover it in more detail on another video. So the problem is the air particles moving over the top part of the wing will accelerate. Now, depending how fast the aircraft is traveling already, if it's traveling close to the speed of sound, that extra acceleration of the wind can cause the flow of air to accelerate to the speed of sound at a certain point, generally the thickest part of the wing. Now, the speed at which an aircraft generates supersonic flow over any part of the aircraft is called m-crit. It doesn't necessarily mean that the aircraft is traveling at supersonic speeds. It means airflow over a certain part of the aircraft is traveling at supersonic speeds. So in this example, let's say at this particular point, the airflow has become supersonic. So that generates a shock wave, generates a lot of problems, disturbed airflow, uh, but the biggest problem is it moves the center of pressure aft. Now the center of pressure normally is gonna be somewhere around the 25%. As the aerofoil reaches M crit and it hits supersonic speeds, everything essentially moves back. So that center of pressure point is now further backwards. What does that cause? Well, that causes the wing essentially to be pulled from further aft, and it can move as further back as 50% of the cord line. What does that cause? It causes Mach tuck. You may have heard of that, right? So the problem that early aircraft encountered with straight wings was that as they reached those supersonic speeds, they would have a tendency to dip the nose. So that's called Mach tuck. That's where that comes from. It's because that center of pressure moves aft. Moving on. So as you can see in my drawing here, a straight winged aircraft, the airflow will hit that wing, will travel over it, will accelerate as we've talked about in the previous slide and that movement over the wing is called cordwise flow because it goes parallel to the cord line and it's that acceleration that limits the speed of the aircraft. There will become a point where airflow over the cord will hit a supersonic speed and cause all the problems that come with that. So how do we delay Mach crit? Well we introduce a different component to the flow. By angling the wing backwards we generate another type of flow. And this flow is taken away from the cordwise flow. The cordwise flow will still flow parallel to the cord. However, some of that airflow will be translated into spanwise flow. Now spanwise flow travels along the leading edge and it does not accelerate. That's one of the key points to this. So we have flow which is not accelerating, which means the more we angle the wing backwards, the more spanwise flow we're gonna have and the faster the aircraft can go. So we are still generating lift from this spanwise flow. However, as it is not accelerating, we can get closer to supersonic speeds without generating supersonic flow over the wing. So the basic point to remember here is if we have a swept back wing, the airflow is gonna be divided into two chunks the cordwise flow and the spanwise flow. Because it is not accelerated, it means we can push the aircraft speed faster without hitting supersonic speeds over the wing and hence generating all that drag and all the negatives that come with it. I hope that's uh, cleared it up for you. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. All the best, till next time.